Well, I think that uh, if you look at just the scientific model of how we are structured, that by the time we're 35 years old, we've done so many things, so many times, that it becomes an unconscious habit. And 95% of who we are is really unconscious thoughts, uh, automatic habits, uh, emotional reactions, uh, beliefs, perceptions, attitudes that function pretty much behind the scenes of our awareness. So the process of becoming conscious of what you're unconscious about yourself begins the process of change. So how you think, how you act, and how you feel is called your personality. And your personality creates your personal reality. That's it. So if you wanted to create a new personal reality, you'd have to change your personality, which means you'd have to start thinking about what you've been thinking about and change it. Become aware of your automatic habits and behaviors and modify them. And then look at the emotions that you've experienced that keep you anchored to the past and really look at them and decide, do these emotions really belong in my future? So when you begin to think differently, when you begin to act differently, when you begin to feel differently, your life is going to change. So most people like to wait for a reason to change, like a crisis or a trauma uh, or a diagnosis from some disease. Now all of a sudden, they realize that they can't go on living the same life any longer. They have to change things something about themselves so I think that uh, my message is why well, wait for that trauma that when you teach people that they can begin to create a better life for themselves and even improve their health and give them the tools on how to do it it becomes more uh, uh, effective for everybody now here's the key is that we are already wired to do this we're always always in the process of creation if we're truly relaxed and beginning to think about what we want for ourselves and our lives. When we're living in stress and we're living in survival, then it's not a time to create. So getting people out of those survival states and into more creative states allows them to do what we're innately uh, wired to do. Okay. And it's a skill. Just like anything you do over and over again, you get better at it. And in the beginning, it's difficult because uh, we always come up against some aspect of ourselves in order for us to move into a new life. So the hardest part about all of this is really making time to do it. That's it. And it, many, many people spend the majority of their life waking up every morning and running through a series of routine behaviors, seeing the same people that push the same emotional buttons, uh, doing the things at work that they know that they can do so well, uh, thinking the same thoughts, uh, living by the same emotions all day long. And as a result of it, if you're thinking the same thoughts, making the same choices, demonstrating the same behaviors, creating the same experiences, and living by the same emotions every single day, your inner world is going to be a complete match with your outer world. In other words, your biology is going to be in a tango and a dance with your outer world and nothing will change. So then, if you keep thinking and acting and feeling the same way, you condition your body to become the mind. So then if you're waking up every morning and you're running through a series of routine behaviors that you did yesterday, then your body's already programmed into a predictable future based on what you did in the past. So we use the model of meditation. So a person sits down and they close their eyes and they disconnect from their outer environment. The people they know, the things they own, the places they have to go, the experiences that no normally they create every day that reaffirms their same emotions. So if they're not experiencing their environment and they're closing their eyes and they're playing soft music in the background, they're, they're plugging their ears with earplugs, that's less information. If they're sitting their body down and not getting it up and doing something and not eating or uh, smelling or or tasting or feeling with their body, that's even less sensory information coming into their body. And if they're sitting down, they're not thinking about all the schedules they have to keep or all the past things that happened yesterday. They're truly in the present moment. It's when we get beyond our bodies, get beyond our environment, and we get beyond time, that we really fall into the sweet spot of the generous present moment. And that's really 
when we connect to the quantum field where all those potentials exist. So then getting to that point where you are being defined by thought alone, because now your inner world is more real than your outer world, begins for you to begin to condition the environment uh, to get beyond your body and to create some new experience in your life. And, and it takes practice, but we've measured enough brains now in all of our research uh, that it becomes a skill and people slip into these states very naturally if they practice. Are these measurements done during the workshop that you are doing? Um, we do uh, several scientific measurements during our advanced workshops. And our advanced workshops, are, we just did a few uh, in Mexico just last month, and it's, a, it's an opportunity for people to retreat from their lives for five days and really deepen their understanding of the work and really create, when they walk out of there, create a different life for themselves. And so we do the measurements right in our advanced workshops. We measure uh, brain waves, we, you know, we do uh, brain scans, we do a heart rate variability, we measure epigenetic changes in urine, we measure neurotransmitters, we measure cortisol levels, uh, uh, we measure the energy of the energy around people's bodies we measure uh, as much as we can because uh, we we uh, we want to demystify the process and what about the, the, the higher potential of energy that is when it's a group of people uh, doing this kind of meditation instead of you doing alone in your house mm -hmm. well it always uh, we, we have a community of 500 or 700 or a thousand people in a room uh, it's not just the energy that they bring, it's the type of energy they bring. So when you combine a clear intention, which is a function of the brain, and an elevated emotion, which is a function of the heart, it tends to create a more broadened electromagnetic signature that surrounds people's bodies. Now, the type of energy that's created is very rhythmic, it's very coherent. It's very orderly. Uh, it has a, it's synchronized, and it's like dropping pebbles in water. They become very, very rhythmic. Uh, that energy carries an intent, a thought. And so, if I'm sitting next to you, or there's a thousand people, or five hundred, or seven hundred people in a room, and everybody's energy is becoming coherent, the moment those two energy fields interact, they interfere. When they come together, they are going to create a bigger amplitude, a bigger wave. That bigger wave is a higher energy. And we've measured this over and over again in our advanced workshops. And, and we've made scientific history because the energy that uh, at the end of the event is way higher than the energy when we start. Now, what does that mean? That's available energy for people to heal. That's available energy for people to create a new life for themselves. That's available energy for them to have a mystical experience and on and on. So there is power in community, but it has to be the combination of that clear intention with an elevated emotion. Because the majority of our time when we're living in stress, we're actually drawing from the field. So the energy of the room will go down. So how do you teach people instead of taking from the field to give to the field? And we know that uh, when you get a community of people together, and they're all wearing heart rate monitors, which is a function of the autonomic nervous system, if 50 people are sitting in the front of the room wearing heart rate monitors and everybody else in the room is creating a clear intention with an elevated motion, that all those people wearing the heart rate monitors, that their lives be enriched, that 90% of them, all their hearts go into coherence at the exact same time. In other words, they're being influenced by that energetic field and we are bound by that field. And the emotion that binds us is love. It's the glue that keeps us forming.